Hi everyone, my name is Julian and today we're going to walk through the brand new Berlin Orchestra created with Berkeley together. We're going to take a look at some of the many features in this library and how it all functions within the sign player. And there's a lot to go through and we're going to move kind of patch by patch almost. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to give you a little bit of background information and highlight some of the key features of this library. Now, as the name promises, it was created in collaboration with Berklee College of Music. And when Berklee approached orchestral tools, it was really with the aim of designing a dedicated library to um, be used alongside their film scoring curriculum. So we have a full orchestra, meaning we have um, every instrument that you would in a symphony orchestra. So we have strings, woodwinds, brass, a lovely percussion section, as well as a harp. Um, and it's capable of some really complex writing and arrangement. For instance, you get uh, not just a horn ensemble, but four individual horns, which was actually a special request uh, from Berkeley. Now, something that's really exciting about this is that all these samples are derived from the flagship Berlin series by Orchestral Tools, meaning that all the dynamic layers and the round robins are from these incredibly professional sources. It was all recorded in situ, meaning, as I'm sure you're aware, in their natural seating position, and it was all recorded with natural gain levels, so everything sits perfectly within the mix. Um, it's important to note that uh, this collaboration between Berkeley and Orchestral Tools will continue in the future and there's projects ongoing to make sure that students have access to the best possible tools for orchestral composition. So without further ado, if we dive into the strings here, uh, we get an overview of what's contained within the section. And by expanding the individual instruments, we have access to the articulations. And there really is a nice uh, selection here. So we have the sustains, as well as all of the important uh, short articulations. So we first have these solo instruments here, and these are the first chairs or respective leaders of their section. So we have the solo violin one and two, and we have the viola, cello, and the double bass. And then underneath that, we have the ensembles uh, respectively. Now let's have a look at the first violin ensemble to start us off. Now using the key switches, we can easily jump between articulations on the fly, which is so great to sketch with. So if we, for example, start with some pizzicato and then move on to staccato and want to end it with some tremolo, we can just do this by using the key switches down here. Now what we can also do is to load a solo instrument such as our first violin and play this alongside the ensemble, which is routed to the same MIDI channel. And the effect this has is really adding definition to the sound. So let's take a listen to the uh, legato in this case. Let's check out just our um, first solo violin articulations because uh, they're really, really great to give you an idea of some of the short articulations contained within those. Really, really nice. Uh, now let's check out the trills, which are um, standardly set to a half tone. But we can switch this in the performance meter onto a whole tone. I'm also a big fan of the cello, so let's take a listen to that. Just has so 
much character. I really love it. Um, let's check out some of this spiccato in the uh, chili. Now what we can also do is double up the chili with the basses. Now let's listen to the staccatos here. It has such a weight to it and it's such a warm, authentic sound. While we're here, let's add some more strings into our selection, uh, which is really easy to do. So if you want to sketch using an entire ensemble, you can. Um, a great thing you can do with the sign player here to save resources is uh, to simply load the articulation that you want to use. For instance, in this case, if we wanted to create something rhythmical, we'll just use staccato. So I'll use the staccato um, patch from all the ensembles, and then we get this full uh, string section ready to use um, for sketching. This lovely full sound and this way you can sketch using just the entire ensemble. Of course we cannot forget the fantastic harp they included. It's really the most perfect harp I've ever played and um, the reason for that is because the space is just right within the Teldex studio. It's not too wet, it's not too dry, it's absolutely lovely. <laughs> Hopefully you can get a sense and you're listening on some good speakers or monitors because it's got a really magical vibe to it. Now onto the woodwinds, you can tell right away that this is really designed for some complex orchestrations and you can write exactly like you would for a real orchestra. Um, we have some excellent, and I mean excellent, solo instruments. They're just really highly playable and just such a joy to use. For the overview, we have the piccolo, we have two flutes, two oboes, an English horn, two clarinets, two bassoons, a bass clarinet, and a contrabassoon, so very traditional. So let's take a listen to the first flute, and we're going to turn on the vibrato here, um, because that really makes a difference uh, to hear the player's performance. Um, let's move on to the staccatos. It just invites you to play. Now let's listen to the oboe. I take a listen to the staccato as well here. One of my favorites here as well is the bassoon. And especially the staccato are just phenomenal. And again, it's really easy to quickly construct this ensemble in the sign player. So I'm just going to load up um, a quick combination, flutes, oboes, and the bassoon, um, and then route them to the same MIDI channel. And then we have um, a small section uh, that we could sketch with. Mm -hmm. 
one thing I love to do as well is to create combinations of popular instrument pairings such as um, low woods and low strings, so like uh, bassoon and cello. So let me quickly load that up. So we've got the staccato here from the bassoon and then I'm going to load um, a cello staccato as well. Route this to the same MIDI channel and then we're ready to go. Now moving on to the brass, um, we have three trumpets and then the trumpet ensemble. We have four solo horns and then the horn ensemble, which as I mentioned before, was a very specific request from Berkeley. Um, then we have two trombones, a bass trombone and a tuba. And something that's really interesting about this is that they've added a new fortissimo layer, which is three Fs. So you can go really very, very loud. Um, and this will be added to the Berlin brass later. I'm going to play a little bit of the trumpet and the horns. So starting with the trumpet ensemble. And again, of course, we can uh, add a uh, solo trumpet to really enforce uh, and enhance uh, the ensemble. And again, we can obviously switch uh, the uh, articulations by a press of the key switch and um, toggle between these articulations as we see fit when we're sketching. Now the low brass is uh, something I really like here as well and they've done such a great job. It has a lovely growl to it and uh, I'm just going to load up the trombone and the tuba at the same time and uh, switch between the articulations as I see fit. Now, as I've mentioned before, the four separate horns and having a horn ensemble was a very specific request from Berkeley, and it really gives you immense flexibility for writing complex arrangements. And indeed, for the brass as well as for the strings, um, you can really um, customize the size of the ensemble by simply loading more ensemble patches and uh, doubling up on certain um, instrument groups. And that way you can create a much larger sound should your composition require it. Right, now moving on to the percussion. Uh, we have such a great selection here. I mean, we have individual instruments as well as uh, percussion sets. Uh, so we have the standard drums here, we have some cymbals, we have um, some more embellished percussion over here, a fantastic timpani, um, and of course the usual suspect Celestia, tubular bells, glockenspiel, vibraphone, a lovely marimba phone, and of course the xylophone. What would we be without it? Now I'm going to go straight into the timpani for some of the rolls. Um, I'm going to use the mod wheel to roll those in, but for the crescendo patches um, that's not really needed. So here we have the long rolls. Just lovely. And also, of course, the short rolls. And then for the crescendos, we'll play the long. Now let's move to a percussion set. So I'm just going to load up the standard drums. And here we have our bass drums. It just sounds fantastic. It's such a massive sound. So we have the single hits, we have dynamic hits, and we have the rolls. You really get a sense of the Teldex space there again. Uh, it's just a joy to use. Now um, let's move on to some of the uh, unpitched metals. So really
really for any kind of impacts, uh, these work super well and you have something uh, there again for, for any kind of style of writing. Now let's move on to some of the uh, embellishments. Now these are fantastic to lend to your composition an air of playfulness and really a little bit of um, unusual embellishment. Uh, so it's really fantastic the variety they've included here. Now, of course, in the percussion, we also have the uh, melodic elements like the celestia. Now for the uh, marimba phone, which is one of my favorites. And then of course the xylophone. All right, and there you have it. That's the complete Berlin Orchestra, or at least a very large part of it. I really hope that you gain an understanding of the magnitude and of the scale of this library, because in my opinion, it's just the perfect starting point for really complex orchestration and fantastic writing. So um, thank you so much for watching and listening and happy playing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.